Hello, thank you very much for being here. My name is Maxim Masalski. I welcome participants of the Open Source Summit North America 2020. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and I'm pretty sure most of you are now working from home. I'm a software engineer in Intel Corporation. I'm working in the team responsible for the development of the Zephyr real-time operating system and its QA process improvement. Today we'll talk about Zephyr Artos, its juicy features, and my experience applying that system for the robotic development. For my tutorial, I will use small robot and ARM-based evaluation board called Microbit. Please take a look at that agenda. First, I will talk about Zephyr project overview. Also, we'll cover key points of the Zephyr Artos. Then I will move to the part two, which covers robots, microbit board description, how to develop an application for the robot using Zephyr Artos. And finally, we will make a tutorial how to program a line follower robot using Zephyr Artos. Let's start our tutorial from a brief introduction of the Zephyr project. What is Zephyr Artos? It's a small, scalable, real-time operating system optimized for resource-constrained devices across multiple architectures. To my mind, Zephyr is at the bleeding edge of device real-time operating systems. When I said small, I mean image footprint weight. Minimum configuration to print just a Hello World message is around 2 kilobytes, and the maximum configuration is up to 8 kilobytes. You can agree with me that it's impressive characteristic for the Artos. So Zephyr can run comfortably in 8 kilobytes of RAM and can even run in a minimum of 2 kilobytes of RAM. It's an open source real-time operating system. To host source files, we are using GitHub. The software is a perfect choice for simple connected sensors, LED wearables, modems, and small wireless gateways. It's a Linux Foundation hosted collaboration project it's permissively licensed under Apache 2.0 license. As I said before, it's managed on GitHub. That's our project link. We built uh, our Artos to be secure and safe. So develop with the security in mind. Great community support. Uh, we are like international developers family. Our Slack channel has more than 1,600 people. Every day I join new members, many conversations on Slack and GitHub. If, would, if you would like to receive any support, you can be sure that you can receive it. Also, every week occurs open daily meetings where everyone can join and discuss testing issues, issues about performance, and so on. The cross architecture with broad system on chip and development board support. Zephyr supports more than 219 boards of different architectures like uh, x86, ARM, ARC, NEOS2, Extensor, POSIX, uh, RISC V. That means no need to develop support for your board by yourself and it can really save time. The, this diversity of supported boards uh, gives developers and product manufacturers multiple options to solve the embedded RTOS challenges with Zephyr. If your board is not supported out of the box, adding a new board and support for it is quite simple. So we have special documentation and you can follow it and find all necessary information about it. Vendor neutral governance. It's driven by technical steering committee. For now, Platinum members are Intel, Nordic, NXP, and Oticon. Silver members are Adafruit. Uh, that company produces electronics for DIY makers. Maybe you, ho you heard about it. Uh, also a company called Ant Micro. Both Foundries IO, Lail, uh, Linaro, Sci-5, uh, Synopsis, Texas Instruments. Complete fully integrated, highly configurable, modular for flexibility. 
Developers can create a solution that meets their needs. The most powerful part of Zephyr that is configurable options kconfig. It allows you to set up Zephyr on the fly. About that uh, option, I will talk later more. Product development ready using uh, long-term support includes security updates. Zephyr is growing fast and it's changing fast too. So sometimes it will be challenging to use the latest master on the production level. Rebasing uh, really can be painful if you know. But with the help of the Zephyr long-term support releases, your product development could be more stable and predictable. Please take a look at the table. There are important key points which can play a big role when you decide what Artros start to use for the project. First column called Developing with Zephyr. If you want to develop with Zephyr, use GitHub. Create a pull request to the master if you want to add a new feature. Our SDK uh, supports Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'm using Linux Fedora and I wanted to develop for Zephyr. For hundreds of boards, I develop sample applications that can help you to understand Zephyr better. So just find necessary board from the list. That is list of supported architectures. And for each architecture, there are many boards. As of June 5th, Zephyr Total has more than 41,000 commits, more than 687 contributors, 37 repositories, and more than 16,000 pull requests closed. Impressive numbers. I'm sure when you're watching that presentation, that numbers are growing and changed a lot. Now, please take a look at column called architecture. There is key points. First is modular and configurable. Zephyr has two types of threading, cooperative and preemptive. Memory resources are statically allocated. Zephyr has integration of device driver interface, stack overflow protection, thread isolation, kernel object device driver permission tracking, native and optimized IP stack, Bluetooth mesh and uh, Bluetooth low energy support. So you can see there is a table where you can find all uh, Zephyr architecture structure. We have kernel, kernel services, schedules, power management and platform, then OS services, application services, like this. Let's move on. And our last column called Small Linux Browser. To my mind, from the Linux developer side, Zephyr Artos can be called as a small Linux browser. Zephyr is taking the best practices from the Linux. The Zephyr kernel and subsystems can be configured at build time to adapt them from the specific application and platform needs. The configuration is handled through kconfig, which is the same configuration system used by the Linux kernel, like uh, make menu config. The goal is to support configuration without having to change uh, any source code. You can write uh, kernel configuration settings in dot configuration file for permanent use or use terminal or graphic user interface to choose kernel configuration options. In the picture below, you can see an example how the graphic user interface of the Zephyr kernel configuration uh, looks like. So you can choose uh, any options and then uh, build a kernel with that options. 
Also, I can add that Zephyr has a Linux coding style, device tree used for board definitions, integrated chemo support, no need to have special hardware to get started. You can use chemo uh, to run your application or sample application. That is key points of the Zephyr Artos. Now we are going to program a robot using Zephyr. I decided to test Zephyr in real conditions and develop a simple device that can provide an experience. To use Zephyr for robotics development, such as motor control, sensors reading, and finally, control of the robot. For that project, I decided to create a line follower robot based on Zephyr Artos, micro bit development board, and small robot car. So you can see robot car, micro bit board. We will flash Zephyr on it, and it's connected by Zephyr. So here is board and the robot chassis. How do you write code for your robot? Before I had experience programming Arduino boards and creating robots based on them, I wanted to level up my robotics development skills and started to use RTOS to have a new experience in coding of robotic devices using Zephyr. I think Arduino is a great platform for the development of prototypes, but if we are talking about production development, definitely it's not the best choice. Most common Arduino boards are 8-bit microcontrollers, but Zephyr supports more powerful things like x86, ARM Arc, and etc. As I mentioned before, I wanted to see how Zephyr can challenge that task. I want to notice that rare ARM Arduino boards are supported by Zephyr, like Arduino Due and Arduino Zero. Recently, I found that for Arduino, we developed an extension to develop with Arduino API using Zephyr Artos as a base system. So you can find it, open that link. Unfortunately, I didn't check that, but you can try if you know Arduino well. Uh, just using Arduino language for programming instead of directly using C and Zephyr APIs here. But we will go and use Zephyr Artos to build a robot. It can be difficult for Arduino developer, but I think you, it's a chance to level up your DIY robotics development skills. Let's start our tutorial. I want to introduce you a microbit board. As I said before, Zephyr supports various boards, more than 200 of different architectures. I decided to use a microbit board which is an ARM architecture. Uh, initially, it was created in England to use by kids during coding classes in schools. I used that board to teach kids coding, and one time I found out that Microbit supports Zephyr. I took it from them, and now my kids are reading books and not studying programming, because now it's my toy. Joe, I bought one more for myself. It's an expensive board. I think maybe the cheapest one you can use for hardware experiments with Zephyr. You can code that board using Scratch, MakeCode, or even Python. And because it has an R51 chip supported in Zephyr kernel code, finally I can run Zephyr Artos on it. That is technical data. Size 4 by 5 centimeters or 1.6 by 2 inches. It has two programmable buttons. Button number one, button number two. Three digital analog input output rings. That is uh, one, zero, one, two uh, rings. You can connect something to them. And that is power ring to connect uh, power supply. 25 individually programmable LEDs. That is LED matrix. Uh, which you can program and uh, it can draw different images, digits, characters, and etc. 
32-bit Cortex-M0 CPU with Bluetooth low energy. The board has accelerometer, compass, temperature sensor, and gyroscope. 20-pin edge connector. It's here, 20-pin. Uh, you can connect uh, additional expansion boards to them. And uh, micro-USB connector. It's here. Two flash uh, program to the board. I think it's... Uh, you know, I think it's enough to create your own robots, uh, and um, we can use that for APIs to read data from sensors using GPIO, uh, trick pins of that board, send I2C commands from that board to the connected devices, and have a lot of fun. Really, you can use any board to run Zephyr. Now the market has a lot of boards made by STM or NXP uh, or real board, uh, any other company with built-in sensors, buttons, and LEDs. Unfortunately, if you want to build a robot, like in my case, the easiest way is to use Microbit because it has many expansion boards for different purposes designed to use in your DIY project. Uh, we will talk in the next slide about expansion boards. As I said before, Microbit was initially developed for kids, so many additional platforms were designed to be connected with the Microbit. Uh, robot cars, drones, biped robots, robotic arms, and etc. To my mind, it's okay if we are talking about creating DIY robot during your free time or just trying to program a robot if you never did that before. Uh, I think the number of boards and robots for the microbit are the same as the Arduino ecosystem has right now. Uh, with the microbit, you can build your own drone, robotic arm, various car chassis and bike robots. And uh, you can program them also using simple coding languages like Scratch, MakeCode, or if you want to move forward, use Zephyr and C language to program your robot. I already ran some samples from Zephyr Source 3 for Microbit, like Bluetooth mesh sample. Uh, I think to use Microbit for Bluetooth mesh demo is the cheapest way to have many boards. Uh, connected in one um, network because the price of one board is really low and I don't know any other evaluation arm board cheaper than that. I decided to move forward and uh, create my own sample and merge it into the Zephyr source code tree. Uh, as you remember, my idea was to create a line follower robot and to program line following function of the robot using Zephyr. So our robot will follow the black line and the program will be written in C and uh, be powered by Zephyr Artos. That is video of my final project. Now I will talk more about line following robot. For the robot, I used simple two motor robotic chassis with two line sensors on it. So that is a line sensor and a motor. You can see a photo of that robot. Line, line sensors are underneath, somewhere here. Size of the robot is 3 by 3 inches. It's a tiny robot. Uh, to control motors, a uh, robot has I2C drivers. Uh, that is I2C driver for each motor. Uh, there, I will use Zephyr capabilities to bind I2C device according to its address and send appropriate control commands. Line sensors are binary sensors, so they send value low or zero uh, if detected dark surface, and uh, value high or one if detected white surface. 
For them, I will use Zephyr GPIO control capabilities. The manufacturer of the robot provides a line following program for that robot. That program is written in make code language. It's a graphical language created by Microsoft and designed for kids to teach them programming like Scratch programming language. Background of that graphical language is written in JavaScript. Then I started to think about how to port that program to C. So we have make code program. It looks like Lego bricks, you can see. Easy to code, but for our task, necessary to understand how that program is interpreted to be executed by the robot. Need to investigate what drivers and principle of motors control, need to investigate what drivers and principle of line sensor data reading. Here you can see the blocks and their implementation in JavaScript. I contacted a manufacturer and asked them what driver model and method of control PWM or I2C and model of the sensors they are using. First, we have block for motor. It accepts speed. Then you can choose uh, left or right motor by choosing M1 or M2 and the uh, direction of rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise. Here is code in JavaScript, but still not enough necessary to dig into code sources. That is block to read data from line sensor. You can choose sensor left to right, and that's all. Returns value zero or one. Here, here is JavaScript code. For kids, that blocks are black boxes. But for me, it was necessary to dig in and understand how they are implemented to use that code in my Zephyr application. I continue reverse engineering of the make code program. The robot manufacturer provided me their library on GitHub. Then I investigated Block's implementation in a low-level code layer. Uh, I found they had all code definitions in TypeScript file, and uh, there I found all control code for motor and also code for reading data from the sensors. Uh, motor driver information, I found out that uh, motor driver uses I square C bus. Uh, also, I found out uh, in the TypeScript file all necessary I square C commands to control motor driver. As Zephyr supports I square C and communication with I square C devices, I can control motor driver by knowing its address and uh, control commands responsible for setting motor speed value and uh, motor uh, rotation direction. That is line sensor information. Robot has two line sensors. Uh, line sensors are binary. Uh, they use infrared LED to emit light and then measure the amount of the reflected light and we can, uh, and line sensor can detect if it's white surface or it's black surface. Because if a white surface, light will be reflected a lot and it will not be consumed by a surface. But if it's a black surface, light will be consumed by a surface and uh, will be just a few reflected light. You know that black car uh, in hot weather becomes more uh, hot than white. That's because it um, consumes all uh, falling light on it. So using Zephyr GPIO, I can read data from the sensors. Also, I find out uh, necessary pins uh, to which microbit board 
is connected and uh, that is pin 22 pin, pin 23 one pin for each sensor so the basic idea will be to keep a black line between two sensors and it will be enough to let the robot follow the trajectory of the line like this i think it's time to start creating an application with zephyr artos first of all let's talk about the zephyr application structure zephyr's base directory hosts zephyr's own source code its kernel configuration options and its build definitions and so on the core of the artos is here zephyr project slash zephyr I created an application directory called line follower robot here. Inside the Zephyr source code based directory to make it possible to add my program to the GitHub uh, because I want to uh, create a pull request and uh, merge my code in Zephyr source tree. My directory will, co will contain all application specific files. Uh, so we create an application directory, line follower robot. Then I created source directory to store source code and additional libraries if needed. Then I want to show you how we will set up our, our application. Kernel configuration options will be within the project.conf file and cmakelists.txt will be in directory line follower robot. Uh, it will be used to generate build files. Um, also, I created a readme file because uh, I want to generate a documentation uh, using Doxygen. And uh, after my code will be merged, uh, documentation for that application uh, could be visible on docs.zephyrproject.com web page. It will be later visible there. You can refer to the official Zephyr page where you can find a more detailed description of the application development process. So create application directory, place all source files there, read me, file with sample description after merging my PR to master will be on official documentation web page and uh, as you can see my program already merged and you can find readme here by opening that link building an application Zephyr's build system is based on CMake the build system is application centric and requires Zephyr based applications to initiate building the kernel source tree. The application build controls the configuration and builds process of both the application and Zephyr itself, compiling them into a single binary. The default build tool in Zephyr is West. Zephyr's meta tool, which invokes CMake and the underlying build tool, Ninja or make behind the scenes. So Zephyr build system compiles and links all components of an application into a single application image that can be run on simulated hardware or real hardware. Like any other CMake based system, the build process takes place in two stages. First, build files, also known as a build system, are generated using CMake command line tool while specifying a generator. This generator determines the native build tool the build system will use in the second stage. The second stage runs the native build tool to actually build the source files and generate an image. To learn more about this concept, refer to the CMake introduction in the official CMake documentation. As I said, Zephyr has a West meta tool which invokes CMake. And you can choose two variants, use West and comment West build minus B 
board name or use CMake and Ninja. On Linux and Mac OS, you can choose between the Mac and Ninja generators. It has built tools, whereas on Windows you need to use Ninja since Mac is not supported on this platform. I am using West Build to build my application. But you need to remember that West by default is using Ninja under the hood. We have source application. We have build process, two variants, but West build still uses Ninja under the hood. Then we receive uh, build directory contents, like Zephyr folders, with uh, which stores a kernel image file. Then we have two options, running in an emulator. Also, we can use West build, minus T run, or Ninja run, or running on a board, West flash, or Ninja flash. If necessary, we can use debug. Set up Zephyr application. Before you can build your application, you need to make a setup of it. I will talk about files which I described before, like project conf file, CMake lists, and sample.yaml. The most important is project configuration file. To set up current application necessary to enable vital configuration options. For example, to control I2C device, motor driver, and read data from the sensors, necessary to enable them in that file and add proper configuration options. For my application, I enabled I2C, GPIO, and console output. That is CMakeList.txt file. CMakeList contains all required commands to build application. The first line sets the minimum version of uh, CMake for the project, which is major version 3, minor version 13, and page version 1. Providing a version number allows for a future support for your build environment. The second line finds and loads settings from an external project. Search path for Zephyr specified by the hints. Current Zephyr base variable is home, in my case, home slash maxim Zephyr project. The third line is the project uh, command that sets the project name. The fourth line generates a list of files that match the globing expressions and stores it into the variable app sources. The fifth line specifies sources to use when compiling a given target. Our target is called app and applied a private keyword will populate the sources properly of app target. Sample.yaml file that file is using by sanity test system to detect test cases. Zephyr Artos has special script called sanity check. That script can run all tests and generate a test report for each board. So QA team can review that report and uh, see what tests failed and what tests uh, passed. That sanity check is our testing system in Zephyr. It's written in Python. That file is necessary to have if you are writing tests for your Zephyr application. So sanity check can read that file and detect test cases in your uh, source directory. That is important files for Zephyr application and its setup. After setup the Zephyr application, let's move on and create main.app. 
C file. There I will put my robot application code. Firstly, I added the copyright and license description. Number two, uh, add correct headers to use necessary API. I included necessary header files. The most important is Zephyr. H. No Zephyr application could work without it. Then I added appropriate header files according to my needs. Sys slash print K for console output, drivers slash GPIO to make it possible work with GPIO pins of the microbit board, drivers slash I square C to write control commands using I square C bus uh, to control motor speed of the robot and device header file to add an ans to, to add an I square C device and bind it with the microbit board. As you can remember, robot has a standalone I square C motors driver. Three. Then I defined the I square C slave address. I found out it from the reverse engineering of the make code program for the robot. That is address. I square C control in my case will work using method master slave. The master is device microbit board. And the slave device is an I square C chip of the motor driver. Also necessary to add correct defines for GPIO settings. External edge connector pin mappings to NRF51 chip GPIO pin numbers. Microbit is using the chip, so I set correct pin mappings for GPIO pins connected with line sensors. Also, I found the numbers from reverse engineering of the make code program. And the last one, create device data structures of type struct device. It's necessary to create device driver instances of the appropriate type. For GPIO and for I square C device. Device driver model. Let me make a short introduction about the device driver model available in Zephyr. The Zephyr kernel supports a variety of device drivers. Whether a driver is available depends on the board and the driver. The Zephyr device model provides a consistent device model for configuring the drivers that are part of a system. The device model is responsible for initializing all the drivers configured into the system. Each type of driver, for example, SPI, I square C, are supported by a generic type API. In this model, the driver fills in the pointer to the structure containing the function pointers to its API functions during the driver initialization. These structures are placed into the RAM section in the initialization level order. Standard drivers. Device drivers that are present on all supported board configurations are listed below. Interrupt controller. This device driver is used by the kernel's interrupt management subsystem. Timer. This device driver is used by the kernel's system clock and hardware clock subsystem. Serial communication. This device driver is used by the kernel system console subsystem. Entropy. This device driver provides a source of entropy numbers for the random number generator subsystem. Device data structures. Struct device. The config info member is for read only configuration data set at build time. For example, base memory mapped input output addresses, interrupt request line numbers, or other fixed physical characteristics of the device. This is the config infrastructure passed to the device pointer init macros. 
The driver data that struct is kept in RAM and is used by the driver for the per instance runtime housekeeping. For example, it may contain reference counts, semaphores, scratch buffers, and etc. The driver API struct maps generic subsystem APIs to the device specific implementations in the driver. It's typically read only and populated at build time. Subsystems and API structures. Uh, most drivers will be implementing a device independent subsystem API. So applications can simply program to the generic API and application code is not specific to any particular driver implementation. So more comprehensive information about device drivers in Zephyr, you can find opening the official documentation webpage. Come back to coding Zephyr application. I'm continue coding of the control program for the robot. Now it's time to write a function to read line sensor data. Code will call that function when interrupt will happen. Function to read line sensor data called line detection. That function accepts a pointer to the device driver instance, in my case, a GPIO driver instance, a pointer to the GPIO callback function, and number of pin to read. Inside of the function, I will read raw data from the pins and will write them into a separate array for left line data and right line data and some debug print key. That function will be called as a callback when interrupt will happen on pins connected to the line sensors. To make that, I created a new structure of type GPIO callback named line sensors. Then I got device binding for GPIO according to the specifier's pin cell at an index using macro DT GPIO label with input DT alias, which gives a node identifier from alias SW0. The same API and action I did to bind I2C device. Then I configured GPIO pins of the board for input. Using API GPIO pin interrupt I configured to generate an interrupt when signal will change from low to high and from high to low. So it will be like this, interrupt, or if from high to low, you'll be generated an interrupt too. As you remember, line sensors in the current robot are binary, so they can send only high low values uh, to the receiver. Receiver is a microbit board. Depending on your task, you may configure GPIO pins to react only if signal, signal changes from low to high or vice versa. Then uh, I initialized callback for GPIO using a bit mask for pins uh, that, that is gpio initialization using a bit bit mask for pins and added previously developed function line detection function here is gpio need callback line detection function uh, to read sensors uh, data then i added that callback to the application using GPIO at callback API. Next slide, I will describe motor control functions. 
and later I will explain about whole program line follow. In this slide, I will describe function to control motors. I wrote uh, two functions, one function to control the left motor and second function to control the right motor. As example, I will use function to control left motor. Function to control the right motor is absolutely identical. That function accepts the speed of the motor as an argument. Value of that argument can be from 0 to 255, according to the motor driver chip control commands found from the source code on GitHub. From 0 to 255. function accepted negative value uh, for example here that means rotate motor into the opposite direction before sending i square c command necessary to make a package and set up all necessary values for example buff zero stores channel address left or right in our case, left because left mode. Uh, it has address value. It has value. The buff one stores value, which is responsible for the rotation direction of the motor. So clockwise or counterclockwise. If less than zero, that means rotate motor uh, backward so this is value to rotate motor backward or rotate motor forward move move robot forward the third uh, value stores the speed of the motor rotation as i accept int i convert it to hex after the array has all values in place, it's possible to send the amount of data to an i square c device using the for API. i square c write. This routine writes a set amount of data synchronously. And that is address of uh, i square c driver. Well, that's how works function to control motor. After having all necessary functions, we can create main function called line follow. There will be stored a line follow algorithm for the robot. Line sensor sends value 0 if black surface detected and value 1 if white surface detected. Here is a code example of the line following algorithm using two line sensors, left and right. The best idea is if both sensors detecting black line, detecting black line, both, the robot is moving forward, moving forward, speed 200, just value, not uh, miles per hour or kilometers per hour then if not if the right sensor detected white surface and the left sensor is still detecting black surface that means the line is turning left that picture you can see if uh, right detected white left detecting black surface necessary to turn left so we are turning left Our left motor has speed zero and right motor has has a speed 200 as a result a robot will start turning left accordingly the solution is made if the line is turning right the same if robot is turning right 
here is an algorithm for it. Left control 200 and right control motor uh, put value zero. Also, there is some additional uh, branches like this, like this, inside that main if clauses uh, to detect some exceptions. One and two. So that our main function to control the robot. If both sensors are black, go forward. If something changes, turn left, turn right. After creating an application for Zephyr, necessary to build it and upload Zephyr binary to the board. First, you need to set up Zephyr environment to develop Zephyr application. Zephyr supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Just follow the guide and set up your Zephyr development system. After you completed all the steps from the guide, let's try to build an application. Connect microbit to the computer using micro USB cable. Then we will use west build command. As you can remember, you also can use CMake and Ninja. Uh, now we will build an application running uh, in my directory home Maxim Zephyr project Zephyr. I write that command west build with attribute minus p is pristine, so delete all build uh, which was made before. Minus b is board, in our case BBC microbit. Then uh, samples boards BBC microbit line follower robot is our uh, application directory. And press enter and uh, we will receive ex executable file, uh, in our case, Zephyr elf file. But Zephyr also builds .hex and other formats like DTS or bin. They are all available under build uh, Zephyr directory. Then we will flash our image to the microbit board using West Flash. The same command you can you can replace it using PyOCD. As you know, West is just a meta tool. Under the hood, there are another commands for that, like Ninja Flash. After we flashed image successfully, necessary to turn on robot and put it on the track. It will follow the trajectory of the line. Please watch that video and see how that robot is following trajectory of the line using Zephyr. Of course, that example is very simple and someone can call the sandbox. Yes, it is. That is a simple example of how Zephyr can be used in DIY body and utilize its juicy features. Zephyr Artos is still developing and growing. Every day, it has Zephyr repository, receives a new PRs, improvements and bug fixes. If you want to be on top of the edge and utilize the latest Artos technologies for your project, welcome to join Zephyr. Join Zephyr project Here is a quick summary of resources to help you find your way around. My advice, after you read official Zephyr documentation here, if there are some questions, the best way to use our Slack channel. You know, I recently came into the software development from the DIY robotics development. Many years ago, I used the Intel Edison boards in my robots. As you remember, Intel manufactured that kind of board. And now I'm developing Zephyr Artos, which is going to drive millions of devices across the globe. I think it's a good starting point for everyone who wants to try himself in the robotics programming or programming of the IoT devices. Good luck and thank you for your attention.
Hi. Hi. Uh, I hope that you like my presentation. So there is uh, time for QA. And I will glad to answer your questions about Zephyr or Zephyr plus robotics. Uh, I received some questions already about uh, what model of robot I used. So in case if someone didn't notice, not muted. Okay, mute. Muted. Okay, phone is muted. Good. Uh, let, 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 let me see new questions uh, from Jefferson Rodrigo Villa. Do you see Zephyr being used also for 3D printer? Uh, I think yes. Why not? Because uh, all in all, we can consider a 3D printer like a robot, so it's not uh, a problem to control uh, stepper motors using Zephyr, uh, just need to communicate with uh, stepper motor drivers using I square C and uh, mm, it should be quite easy to, to implement this. So I think it, you need to try, and then you can share your results on GitHub, or uh, and your project can be on Zephyr web page. Next question from Todd: What is like to develop a driver for a peripheral where you need to access registers? Uh, You can use uh, ASM for Zephyr to access registers. So um, for that question, I can't give you a comprehensive answer. So better for you to ask uh, that question on Slack because mainly I didn't develop drivers for Zephyr directly. Next question. Mahendra Taylor, uh, what is one thing about starting with Zephyr that you can say you wish someone has told you when you started? Mm. I think dig into code more. Uh, don't be care of some obscure things, uh, try to understand how kernel works. I think it's uh, main, main things which you need to study when you start to uh, use new operating system for a project. So just don't be afraid uh, to make your hands dirty. Use samples, run samples, dig into code, see pull request, and try to understand. And maybe you can contribute some new features for that project like this. Uh, 
Everade Garcia um, asks about level of OTA programming via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, answer on that question, I don't know. So <laughs> I will tell you directly. And uh, you can ask this on Slack. Uh, definitely someone can answer this right now. So uh, Slack community, more than 1,000 people. So. Every question can be answered maybe within one minute, quite fast. Uh, next question, Mahendra Taylor, can you have a, your application folder outside the Zephyr folder? Yes, of course you can, because um, as we're using CMake and CMake lists.txt file, uh, so, we can find uh, it, it can find your application everywhere right so in my example why i developed a uh, application inside of zephyr tree because i wanted to be merged with uh, upstream code that's why i developed it inside the, uh, zephyr directory so my answer yes you can have application folder outside the Zephyr folder. Question number 15, Dennis uh, Chakwanta. Sorry if I pronounce names or she names a little bit wrong. <laughs> um, how efficient is it with a Raspberry Pi? Uh, for Raspberry Pi, uh, How efficient it! I didn't uh, run Zephyr on Raspberry Pi, but I think it supports uh, to run Zephyr on the Raspberry Pi's uh, ARM chip. Um, I'm not sure about any keep, keep KPIs and uh, how it can be efficient. Uh, Difficult to answer a question. Hmm. Can't can answer it directly to say you something. Maybe again, just try uh, ask on Slack and maybe someone tried run Raspberry, Zephyr Artos on Raspberry Pi. So, uh, Any any new questions? Let me see if I didn't miss anything. I had a question about a recommended IDE. Uh, you can use Eclipse IDE. I'm using uh, Veeam or VS Code. Uh, New question from Henry Taylor. Is the bugging done using a graphic user interface? Yes, you can do that. Uh, in GDB debugger allows you to have a, some kind of graphic user interface. Of course, it will not it will not look like in Microsoft Visual Code, but we we can say that yes, it can be considered as graphic user interface if using GDB. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was not easy because my internet speed is quite low. So, 
Thank you for your support. It's I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, well, no, no, no questions. If no questions, uh, I'm going to make a source code available for a question from Yusuf Isa. Yes, my source code is available because it's already merged in the master branch. Uh, it's already upstreamed. Uh, so you need to um, go to the GitHub Zephyr Artos uh, project link uh, and uh, in uh, samples uh, for BBC Microbit board, you can find my uh, code. It's already uh, upstreamed. I can, I will to give you a link so it can be easier for you to find oh, there is a link not sure if I can share it with everyone But I will make reply public. Yeah, here is it. Link to source code. How painful was the upstreaming process? Um, it depends on what you are trying to upstream. It depends if it's a kernel feature, if it's a driver, or it's a sample. Uh, Zephyr community and Zephyr code maintainers, they are welcome to any uh, sample code for the boards because um, uh, the, the best what we can do now for Zephyr is to make samples uh, for any boards like x86 architecture, ARM architecture, uh, um, risk architecture because uh, if we will have sample for that board developer can easily uh, can try out and see what samples are created and uh, can create his own design or his own code so for my for my code it was it wasn't so painful it wasn't so painful but if i'm streaming some kernel feature or something like this or test test for the Zephyr it can be painful because many comments about how to create this mm. yeah not 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 painful yeah that sounds well like this no we had 20, 20 uh, questions, and uh, we had more than 100 viewers for the presentation. I really didn't expect that uh, great results. If any questions, I'm ready to answer them. For that presentation, well, no questions. <laughs> I can tell you one story. For that presentation, I wanted to use a small drone, like an example, but I didn't have enough uh, time to program drone uh, and uh, make it fly for using Zephyr Artos. But definitely for next presentation, I think the best uh, example will be create a drone, small drone, which will be powered and controlled by Zephyr Artos. Uh, I think it will be a great use case for that. 
a new question from um, Nitin Johan. Sorry if, if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, what's the scheduling algorithm for the Zephyr Artos? Um, about scheduling algorithm. Um, I can I can give you uh, a link to our uh, docs document. There is description about scheduling algorithm for uh, Zephyr. So in, in shortly, so the kernel scheduler it selects the highest priority. Red is red to be the current thread. So. When multiple red is reds of the same priority exist, uh, scheduler chooses the one that has been waited waiting uh, longest. Yeah, I think I uh, replied on your question. Thank you for the question. It's good question. Good question. I will give you a link so you can read more. Here is a link for you. We have 18 minutes to go. Uh, and I see that there are, there are 32 people still there. So don't be shy to ask uh, questions about Zephyr Artos. I'm there to answer them. Uh, about the link. I send it in the comment. I will now reply again. Should be there. Should be there. Yeah. Try this. Uh, your number twenty-three. Uh, I replied there. I attached link. One more question, uh, how can you find out what configurations are available? Mm, and you don't have Linux background. Uh, you can, uh, using Zephyr, as I said, in my presentation, 
there is a kconfig file where you can specify all uh, configuration options necessary for your application. Uh, by default, uh, all configurations are like turned on. So if you need to specify and make your Zephyr image uh, uh, file, dot hex file smaller, you can choose necessary options. Uh, the best thing what I can do is to provide you a link for the documentation. Mm. Because uh, Zephyr Artos is a, an open source project and uh, it has great uh, documentation about everything and uh, about uh, kernel configuration options too. And I think it's the most powerful feature in Zephyr because no any other art process for now. They don't have such feature as I know. Uh, because Zephyr even has a graphic uh, interface to configure uh, kernel like in Linux. It's really powerful thing and very convenient for a developer. That is link. Uh, one more question from Andrew Taylor. Uh, in your application, do you use multiple threads? Uh, no. I'm not using uh, multi-threading in uh, my application. Uh, I'm using uh, single thread with interrupts. So when signal from the sensor comes interrupt uh, interrupt request is coming like this it's made to read sensors that dead so we have 25 questions uh, answered, uh, five more questions and it will be 30, so.
I think if no questions coming, uh, but there are still 28 people, uh, we can finish uh, our session. I really appreci appreciate that uh, you joined uh, my uh, presentation and uh, learned new about Zephyr Artos and how it can be used for robotics uh, purposes. Uh, I want to say thank you for everybody. Uh, stay self, stay safe and healthy, and I hope to see you in contributors of Zephyr Artos on GitHub. Um, so you're welcome. Just install Zephyr and uh, have a try. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.